and but again in regards to um, late night talk show hosts, mm -hmm. I know uh, that's been a big talker. Trevor Noah specifically being facetious mm. in, in a in that sec that segment on the desk where he does the monologue said, "Are we shifting the conversation now to hotel security versus gun laws?" You know what I mean? So mm. it's the the idea of who's responsible. Who's responsible yeah. and are we going to zone in on every little thing mm -hmm. where that may not even be the point? Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. No, that's true. And that brings up the next conversation yeah. about the late night hosts. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel had about a nine and a half minute monologue last night. An where emotional he one. Got very emotional. Jimmy Fallon had Miley Cyrus and Adam Sandler come on and, and sing an emotional song. Um, Stephen Colbert. I mean, every every late night host has almost used this platform to transition into you know, I want to be able to humanize my feelings and express my feelings. And yes, I'm supposed to be your comedian Monday through Friday after a long day's work. But how do you feel about these late night hosts using those platforms to express their own feelings and yeah. emotional feelings at that? Is it, and is it any different than when, you know, you bring up uh, entertainment as in football, NFL, mm -hmm. and when players like Kaepernick get political about their own, um, you know, fight that they are trying to fight? Do you want to hear from those entertainers? Do you want to hear their perspective? Is that maybe easier for you to digest or for all of us as human beings in this society in 2017? Is it easier for us to digest from someone who we love? We tune in to these shows because we're connected to these people and we mm -hmm. want to hear from them. We love them. It's different than turning on a newscast. You turn on a newscast, you know you're going to hear the tough stories right. of the day. You're no, you don't exactly expect that when you turn on the television to watch a comedian, which personally is more striking. This is someone who works yeah. in news. Because I don't expect that from someone, when they go there, I go, oh, okay, I'm it's listen. time. This is serious. It's time to listen. That conversation has shifted at least for that monologue part. So mm -hmm. I'm still at that point where I'm not norm That's not normal to me for, for comedians to go there. So when they do, I don't mind. I think it's powerful whether I agree or don't agree. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful moment in pop culture for me. Well, but again, it's, that's the job of a, of a comic is to uh -huh. push the envelope. Sure. There are uh, thousands and thousands of comedians out there, but if you have ever watched some of the people, some of the ones that people consider the best, if you've ever watched them, whether it's like oh videos that are up on you know, Netflix, or if your mom and dad had the album, my dad has vinyl albums of Richard Pryor. Mm. Whether you listen or see it real time they always push the envelope in some way. Mm -hmm. I think, but now because it's on TV and so there's so many eyes on it, it feels a little different and they're wearing a suit and they're, mm -hmm. they're emoting, they're, there's a little more emotion involved, but it's always been that case. It's just been in a more intimate setting in a comedy club in, a, in, a, in, a, in the comedy cellar in New York or at the comedy store in LA. It's now it's just, for me, it's transitioned to a broader audience. Well, as someone that, who's a working comedian, I mean, for you and to be a female working comedian, I mean, do you feel like without that opinion, without some sort of opinion you lack then in personality and in intrigue by an audience? I know in hosting classes they say all the time, opinion equals personality. Don't have an opinion, you don't have a personality. No one's going to identify with you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, it, yeah, no, totally. And that's what you do. You stand on stage and you pretty much tell people, I want you to laugh at what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Like I want, I think this is funny and I'm going to tell you and you can laugh or not, but mm -hmm. this is what I want to talk about. So this is what we're going to address. So mm -hmm. some, com some comedians don't go that route. Some people want to, you know, talk about puppies and grocery shopping. But mm -hmm. yeah. at the end of the day, people who push the envelope in comedy that they have been known as right. some of the greatest. And some of the things we have to remember too, from a journalist's perspective, a lot of these late night hosts have people on their teams who are working to fact check and who are working to find details in stories and making phone calls to officials and, and dignitaries. And so while they are hosts of these shows, the writers who they have working for them, and they very much dictate the tone of which they want to take their nights, but the writers are working around the clock to try to add substance to what they're saying. So when someone like Jimmy Kimmel said, with all due respect to the senators who voted against closing loopholes on, loopholes on gun laws, he said, with all due respect, your thoughts and prayers are insufficient. And I think that that's what hit a nerve with so many people uh, last night because he's basically telling these dignitaries who didn't do enough 
and he was able to back now up. want to say um, our prayers yes, are with you. Yes, right, who want to now say, you know, our prayers are with you. He's saying, well, you don't get to have your cake and eat it too. And he backs that up. He's not normally a journalist in that way, but his team looked up facts. They looked up percentages of Republicans and Democrats and then brought you that information. So from my perspective, I'm curious to know, receiving that information from a late night host versus your news organization, do you expect that from them? Do you like hearing it from them? Do you take it more seriously or less seriously? I'm just curious because for me, I, the times have changed so much in what these late night host roles are. They and, and someone said earlier, you don't stay in your lane as much anymore, whether you're an athlete, a celebrity, or a host. You People are branching off and taking stands. Yeah. Well, even as journalists, you mentioned, you know, as journalists, yes, you're supposed to be objective. You're supposed to stay in the middle. You're supposed to you present the facts because there's we we're taught there's always two sides of a story. But in in recent months, I'd even say the industry is even changing where you're seeing. Uh, I saw an anchor out of, I think it was our sister station uh, up in Seattle. And it took a stance because he is a human being and he had a son who survived a, a mass shooting a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. So as a father, uh, as a human being, as a, as a man in this country, just as a person, he sat there on, on the set last night and, and talked about gun laws and talked to me and gave his opinion and I thought okay is the landscape really changing where people just want to hear from people yeah it's no longer because we we are even told sometimes there's not always two sides to a story mm -hmm. if it's mm -hmm. sad it's sad people are dead there's not two sides to that that's yeah. devastating no one wants to to hear that oh well some may agree or just no that's sad and that's wrong yeah. and the way they died was wrong yeah um, so I I don't mind if that's the question do we mind hearing from the comedians I don't. Uh, I, I take everything as okay. What's my perspective? What's my takeaway? What am I learning from this? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what are some of our viewers saying? I Joseph Raviota says, "Seems like they are talking out of place." So I'm assuming you're you're okay. meaning those late night, which hosts. I get too. Some people just want to tune into a show or or a, a, a game without feeling like it's being politicized. Mm -hmm. well, then, but then the second question could be, okay, so do who do you want to hear from? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when people die in this uh, this violent way, then somebody needs to speak about it, and we got to come to some solution. So who should we yeah. hear from then? And if you don't hear about it, is it insensitive? Yeah. You know, if they went up there and started telling their normal jokes after the day's done, do you feel like, well, you kind of missed the mark on what the whole nation was talking about today? Right. Sherry Gomez also weighing in, saying, I do not feel Jimmy Kimmel is using his platform. I see it as he is respecting and taking time to remember those lives that have been lost. Mm -hmm. Jimmy couldn't have said it any better about how I feel about it at all. Okay. So that is that is Sherry Gomez's opinion. And I think that a lot of people, you know, Kimberly Morgan, I don't mind expressing your condolences, but leave the political crud out of it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are getting fatigue with politics this go around because of the current political climate in general. You know, that is this year's election as a whole was just m more people talked about it than ever before. And so I think that for any conversation to get political, it strikes a nerve in some way with people. Either you agree or you disagree, but I think a lot of people in, in, in the group of people who I you know choose to respect and know are talking about it more than they used to. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the convers conversations are uncomfortable. That's how stuff gets done. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets done by being comfortable. It just doesn't. So, you know, Sometimes you gotta wade through it to figure things out, but in this case, some we're gonna have to keep talking about it because yeah. people lost their lives. Yeah. So you know we gotta keep we gotta just just gotta keep pushing through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and that's one thing that that it, people have lost their lives, and not just those 59 people in Las Vegas. You talked about. You go back to to, to Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. You go back to Orlando, which at the time was the deadliest mass shooting, right. you know, uh, in modern in modern American history. And now we're talking about this. It's families that are affected forever, mm -hmm. and who are using their story. And I go back to the Seattle anchor using their experience to say, no, until this happens to you, you you don't think it's important mm -hmm. to talk about every day. Yeah. Um, but without a conversation, we don't see change. The greatest changes in our country have happened because there was mass debate about right, it. Right, right.